The National Administration Council for the NAIA has approved some changes for the upcoming 2024 football season. There were some motions that were presented and the NAC accepted or approved many of those motions. There was actually one that was denied. We're going to talk about all of those here on Midwest Sports right now. So let's go ahead and get to the first one. They're going to allow the use of in-game video technology in the coaching booth and on the sideline as well. That is for the 2024 NAI football season for sanctioned games. Uh, that's something that probably was going to happen eventually one way or the other. Here we are in 2024, and it's going to happen here. Now, they're going to give some guidelines. They'll be put into place over the upcoming months, but this gives – programs, the opportunity to make sure they have the equipment. I'm sure that most every program would want to have something that they could use at least in the booth or on the sideline. It's going to be ready to go for 2024. Again, guidelines to come. The second one will be moving the national championship game from December 23rd, that is a Monday, to Saturday, December 21st. Now, there are a couple of things about this one in particular. Number one, I believe this is a good decision moving it from a Monday to a Saturday. This helps for the fans, both the fans who are coming to watch their teams, follow their teams, and also local fans there in Durham, North Carolina, the site of the championship game again for 2024. It gives them more of an opportunity to watch a game on a Saturday. And also those fans who are going to be watching the video of this game, streaming online, wherever it's going to be broadcast, to watch it on a Saturday afternoon as opposed to a Monday too. And I like another thing about it is that it brings it back to a seven-day window from the national semifinals to the national championship games. Now, a few years ago when it was two weeks between the semis and the championship, with respect, this isn't the Super Bowl, and it was a little bit too long. Moving from 14 days to a nine-day gap was better to a seven-day gap will work out just as well, I believe. Also, one of the things about this is that it specifically is talking about 2024. It's not talking about games in seasons to follow. So this is something we'll have to watch and see if it's going to be moved from a Monday to a Saturday again in the future as the championships are posted from 23-24 season through the 27-28 season on the NAIA's website. So we'll see how this goes. The third rule that was approved, the motion that was approved for the 2024 season, is to create a postseason poll following the completion of the national championship. So it's a postseason ranking. Now, I know that this probably doesn't have to be said, except that, yes, it probably does need to be said. It's going to be a ranking, not a rating. OK, the folks are going to be ranking the teams from number one, which should, you would think, be the national champion. That is why it's going to take place after the championship game. You would think the number two team would be the runner up from that national championship game. We'll see how that plays out. It doesn't have to, I'm sure, but they're going to rank teams. They're not going to assign teams numbers according to a standard. They're going to rank them one, two, three, four, five, and then assign those points and, and find out who is going to be the top from the ranking of the total points. One, two, three, four, and so on. Each conference is going to be represented by a vote. That's going to be interesting to see how that plays out as to uh, you'll see how you'll see it nationwide. And so what they're setting up is the opportunity that Every region of the country, realistically, and every conference gets some say in this. No conference ratings or national uh, national oversight. And, of course, high and low votes will be eliminated. That's a part of the ranking system as it is. So that is the third thing. The fourth team, fourth thing is this. This is also interesting. It's a way for football programs and athletic departments as a whole, but specifically the football programs, to generate money from 2024 on. They've approved NAI uniform rules modifications to allow sponsor logos and patches during competition in football. Now, there are some guidelines to this, but right off the bat, this is uh, a very good rule. It's an opportunity for the programs to make some more money. Now, they're going to have to be wise in what they do. So let's go down some of the guidelines here. A, one sponsor logo or patch on a uniform. You're going to have to choose. It's just like in Indiana Jones. You must choose, but choose wisely. And there are some cities that house NAI football programs 
that are big enough uh, to have local sponsors with a lot of money. Not every NAIA city or town has a lot of money with its local sponsors. There could be national sponsors, I'm sure, regional sponsors that come into play here. Local sponsors as well, but only one sponsor logo or patch for a uniform. The logos cannot exceed a standard size of 2.25 inches square, two and a quarter inches square. So it's not going to take up the entire uniform. A couple of things about both of these rules right off the bat is that this is not a NASCAR event. It's not a NASCAR entry. You're not going to enter in the Brickyard 400 with all the logos of every size and countless logos all over the uniform. They're not going to break it up like that. That would just be gaudy. And so there's a lot of wisdom in that. Those Just those first two guidelines alone. Sponsors of alcohol, tobacco, and other legalized drugs, for example, organ marijuana, are not permitted. Well, Division One has enough alcohol sponsors there as it is. You don't see as many tobacco sponsors anymore uh, with FCC guidelines. And as for legalized drugs, uh, where we are based right here in Oklahoma, I don't know about Oregon marijuana, but Oklahoma marijuana, there are dispensaries that are, and I do know how to use the word literally, literally around every corner in some towns. There are so many dispensaries here, they don't need the extra advertisement, I'm sure. But they are out. You can't have uh, alcohol, tobacco, legalized drugs drugs on there. Uh, sponsors whose sole or primary business function is sports gambling, FanDuel, DraftKings, those are not permitted as well. And if you like those things, great, that's fine. FanDuel also sponsors one of the best college football programs on the internet. If you've ever watched Late Kick with Josh Pate, okay, the best Division I football program on the internet. FanDuel is one of the sponsors. It's not going to happen, though, on the uniforms in NAIA football. Again, I agree with both of those, C and D as well. And E, sponsor logos must be in the same location on each set of uniforms. You would think this would be a given, but in the same reason that you're not supposed to, you, you are warned that you're not supposed to iron clothes while you're wearing them, you have to put these things on there as well. You would think that, but logos are going to have to be in the same place on each set of uniforms. And there are guidelines as to where you can put the uniform as well. So if they're over here, they have to be over here on every uniform that you're wearing that day. Just a guideline. So those are the rules that have been approved. Now, there was one motion that was sent to the National Administration Council that was not approved. And that was this, adding spots to the NAIA All-American third team. Third team All-Americans, um, they were going to add eight more spots, adding another quarterback, uh, another defensive lineman, where it added up to eight more spots. And I agree with them denying this one as well. It, it comes to one of those things where, well, it's like Syndrome said in The Incredibles. If everyone's super, then no one will be. And you do need to limit these things to just... a something where they're special, where this is the allotted amount. And so they didn't add any more spots on the third team All-American roster opportunity for the 2024 season. So we'll look at some of the guidelines that have been approved, rules that are coming into place for 2024, according to the NAC in the NAIA. Thanks for watching here on Midwest Sportsnet. And I encourage you to keep on watching the videos here. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video, and we're going to continue to talk about the upcoming NAIA football season and more here on the channel. God bless you. Have a great day.